Hello, welcome to the second episode of the Knit, Knot, and Weave podcast. My name is Dorothy and I go by the pronoun she and her. I'm coming to you from Columbia, Maryland. This is a podcast mainly about the various aspects of the fiber arts, knitting, crocheting, weaving, and yarn dyeing. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Felia with a PH. Welcome to all of my new viewers out there. And if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. So appreciate you spending your time, your precious time with me. So grab something to drink, grab your knitting or your crocheting, and let's get to it. As I shared in my last podcast, I took a cross-country trip with some friends. Um, me and my friend Ellen flew out to Reno, Nevada and picked up um, her daughter, Melissa, and we drove back. We planned it to be about a 10-day trip. And of course, you know, when you're taking a trip with other fiber people, it really turns into a long distance yarn crawl. So we started in Reno, Nevada. We did take a side trip up to South Dakota to the Badlands because that was a spectacular thing to see. And then we made our way across to Pittsburgh where we spent a couple of days with our friend Andy and then we came back home. Uh, we had lots of adventures on this trip and I'll just give you a little snippet of just how our adventure started. <laughs> okay, Mel, stand up. <laughs> Sit down. Stay. Actually, Ellen, you need to stand behind her so that we can put it in the video that you're not touching a light. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have, apparently our light is connected to the bed. <laughs> so as you can see from that clip, we tend to laugh a lot when we're together. We have fun. We find humor everywhere even in the craziness that we that we encounter. So tell me, what were some of your funniest moments when you've been on vacations? Let me know, share them in the comment box below. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell so you can get notified for my next episodes. And if you like this episode, don't forget to hit the thumbs up as the title of my episode says, we're going to be talking about blankets and shawls and scarves and hats because that's what I've got. So my first finished object, first finished object, because I can speak. So my first finished, oh my God. <laughs> my first finished object is the Vertical Slouchy by Laura Jones. I have no idea what yarn this is. It was a fingering weight that was in my stash. I think I may have got it from a yarn swap because it had no ball band on it. So I, I it's kind of a cute slouchy, you can see back here. And I guess, yeah, I don't like it like that. Who knows, I may keep this or it may go into the hat box as a gift for someone come Christmas time. My next finished object is the Bush Tracker hat. This was designed by Gary from, um, he is the podcaster for Urban Guy. If you have not watched Gary, you should go over and, and take a view of some of his videos. Again, he's called the Urban Guy and I'll link him down below. And this was made with a bulky yarn that I hand dyed myself. And I really like it. it was The pattern was very well written. It has this nice little herringbone detail right here that I think is really super nice. And it fits nice and cozy. And I think this one I'm keeping. So the next hat I have is my own design. But here it is. It's got a little cabling 
It's got an extra long brim, which I guess, if you really wanted to, you could wear it down, but that's not really me. But you know, it's a little poofy, but I think it's cute. And I can always, you know, you can put the cables on the side, give it a little, I don't know. What do you think? Do you like the hat? Should I write up the pattern? It's made with a worsted weight yarn. This is, I believe it was a Barocco tweed. You can see all the nice tweedy bits in there. But let me know if you want me to write up this pattern. I'll be more than happy to write it up. So I've been going through my yarn stash and I've really been trying to knit from it, crochet from it. I'm trying to really use my stash. I bought myself a knitting machine, one of those, you know, circular knitting machines, and I made um, a bunch of hats on it. As I'm going through my house this summer trying to get rid of stuff and reorganize, I happened to find a box of yarn. Shocking. So the box was filled with various colors of blues, and I think at one point I, I may have been purchased it to, to make a blanket for somebody, and well, that blanket didn't get made. So I bought myself a knitting machine. Um, I did order the Addie King size, but of course during the pandemic everything was backed up, so I went ahead and bought a low economy one. I think mine's called the Jamit or the Senso or whatever, and I started with that, but I do have my Addie machine now, so I'm very happy. But anyway, I knit hats or I cranked out hats for the Hat Not Hate, and what's really nice about these knitting machines is you can make reversible hats if you want. So those were, these are just a couple that I made, and this one's got a nice thick stripe, but you turn it inside out it's got thinner stripes so I just thought that was neat the knitting group that I organized the Columbia sip and knit group we uh, run a hat a charity hat drive every year um, we started I want to say about five years ago with a title one school in our area and we just put a call out to all of our members to knit or crochet hats for you know elementary age kids from about five to ten years old and we would donate the hats um, usually at the beginning of December so that each the kids could get a hat for the winter so I used my knitting machine and I cranked out with some of my leftovers I've cranked out a couple of hats for them as well and again you know when you've got left leftovers you could make nice reversible hats on the knitting machine as I cover up my face here and you could make some you know smaller ones for the little kids with little pom-poms another one sometimes I'll at night right before I go to bed I'll just crank out a hat and I'm making hats for a good cause so like I said we are on our I think our sixth school this year so I'm looking forward to see how many we collect. Last year, I think we collected just over 500. Another thing I use my knitting machine for is I've managed to crank out a couple of scarves so that we can also donate some scarves to the schools. And you can either cinch them up just like the tops of the hats, or if you use waste yarn, you can always just crochet the ends together and you've got you can see I still have an end to weave in but you have a couple of you know quick easy scarves if you have thinner yarn you could even hold it double and you'll get a nice marled effect it tends to work better if you're using one skein of yarn and you're pulling from the center and the outside together because as the center I'm sorry as the outside of the ball yarn gets pulled off, it sort of automatically twists itself on the on the yarn that you're pulling from inside, and it kind of like double plies it sort of. I don't I don't know how else to say it, but so it double plies it, and so it doesn't get stuck on the machine. But you know, for a thin yarn, it makes a pretty thick, and then of course you know it's knit in the round, so it's doubled already. 
and it'll make a nice warm scarf for some kid. Me and my older sister were born one day apart, but six years between us. So for her birthday, she asked me to make her some pillows for her couch. She had, she bought a new couch. She bought, um, it's mainly blues are in her living room, but she wanted, she had two pillows that she bought and they had like a, a peachy pink, very, very pale peachy pink um, in them. And she wanted something to sort of bring that out. So she gave me a couple of ideas of what pillows she was looking for. We went uh, yarn shopping together. A lot of the pillows that she has on her couch are either square or rectangular. So I decided to, to make one of the round ones that she sent me. It's called the Crafty Boho Pillows. And the designer is Ashley Stallworth. So here they are. So they have these little puffs all the way around. And then they have these little dangly details on it. And the back is plain. Now the pattern called for a 12 inch pillow. But when I crocheted the first piece, the top half, it was more like 14 inches. So I had, I had already, of course, I had already ordered the 12 inch pillows and I had to go back onto Amazon and order 14 inch pillows. So they came in, so I still have the 12s downstairs. I might make pillows for myself. But um, the pillows were not very full, but luckily I have pillow stuffing or phyllo stuffing or whatever it's called. So I've stuffed them a little more and now my sister is going to get two pillows. So during the pandemic, I got real big on using my leftovers and scrap yarns. And I had seen um, a couple of people talking about magic balls online, or I think I've seen some posts on Instagram. But as I was making the some squares for this blanket, whatever was left over, I would just start tying up and making a magic ball. And I had this huge magic ball going. And then I started looking on Ravelry for some ideas of what to do and I found this scarf pattern. The pattern is called Alliterations and it's by Teresa Shobbs. And it's an open, it's an open, you could, I guess if you really wanted to, you could probably graph these, to the ends together and make it into a cowl. But I just did a magic ball and the nice thing is, is that all your knots are inside the scarf. So you don't even have to weave in your ends. You just do those magic knots. And as you can see, I put in even the littlest bits of yarn that only made like, you know, a row, not even, not even two rows. But you just throw it all together and it just makes a modley of colors. It's just, I love it. I can't wait to wear it this winter. This is my first one. I was playing around with some of the um, fun furs that I have or the novelty yarns. And I made this pretty wide scarf. I've got to trim the fringe. I'm, I'm thinking on this one, I might cut it and just do a short tailed fringe since, since the, the yarn itself is already kind of barber pulled. I don't think I want to twist them and knot them. But what do you guys think? Should I should I do a short fringe? Or should I do a longer fringe and just leave it? Tell me what you think in the comment box. Let me know. And then my last one is a cotton scarf. Again, yarn that I picked up from one of our yarn swaps. This is just a thinner scarf. Again, the, the ends need to be chopped. And again, this one I think I am going to just do a little short end. I'm sorry, short end. Short fringe on this one. I just love, I love the colors in this. I mean, look at that. So neat. <laughs>
Moving on to whips. As you can see from that video clip, I have warped up my loom again. I actually warped up two of my looms. I warped up my 10 inch loom with some cotton and I'll post a picture. If I could figure out how to post it, I'll insert it right here. Otherwise I'll just cut it in. And the second one, the one that you just saw the video for was warped up with Miss Babs Kiera. This was her Maryland 2016 colorway. I'm thinking of using something like this color here, this tealy turquoisey blue as the weft color. Um, I don't have anything in my stash that works, but I may attempt to dye something up and get as close of a match as possible. I was considering the coral. It's more orangey. It's coming out more orange in the view, but it is a coral. There is also in here um, little bits of lavender that I thought might be good to use too, but I think I've really settled on that turquoise if I could just match the color. So next I have my Naughty Knitting Sack. And in here is my Vertices United by Stephen West. And it is almost finished. So all the sections are done. The last, I just need to do the edging. So my first section was um, Dragonfly Fibers yarn, and it was the Salt Marsh colorway. It was their Maryland Sheep and Wool color from a couple of years ago. And the dark purple, and yes it is, it is a very dark purple, is one of my own hand dyed. And then section two, was made with hedgehog fibers, uh, bramble was the colorway, and then the hot pink is one of my hand dyed. The main colorway was also one of my main one of my hand dyed. It's a tealy blue color, and then you could see you could see bramble in this portion here. And then here's a better look at the salt marsh colorway from Dragonfly. But this was knit for the Fiber Hustle knit along. And I'm also going to be using it for the Needles at the Ready, the Boys 2021 knit along that they're hosting. So hopefully I will get the edging all put on this weekend and maybe Monday there will be a post on Instagram. We'll see. So next up, nobody's special bag, is my Ziggy United. And right now this is in pieces. But when I showed it to you, when I shared this on my first podcast, I was just down here making the first cup the first few diamonds. So this is the first section with the diamonds and then you do the chevrons. And then I did the second section and I as you could see, let me see if I can get this in there. I crocheted all the squares together as I went. And then I was able to just add on the chevrons. And now the reason it's in two parts is because I started on the other end. And here's the edging. Then it goes into these colors. And here's the next band of diamonds. And I'm working on this color. And then the the colors that are in these two panels, I've got to make the fifth set of squares to put in the middle and then they'll all join together. But this was fun. 
I used a bunch of minis from my stash, made it nice and colorful. I um, It was part of the Christie Glass Knit Along or the Knit and Escape Knit Along. I can't remember which one it was through, but it was, you know, Christie Glass was doing it. And if you are a crocheter, a great tip that I found these little light bulb stitch markers or really any locking stitch markers if you have to stop crocheting put a stitch marker put a stitch marker in that loop this way if your yarn gets pulled you don't lose your stitches I love these stitch markers for that reason it's great I wish someone had told me about this a long time ago when I first started crocheting. So hopefully in the next podcast, this will be finished too and I can wear it. So are any of you out there doing the uh, Vertices United Knit Along or the Ziggy Interrupted Knit Along? or the Needles at the Ready Boys 2020 knit along. So speaking about hats, I have a question for you all. Ever since I started, um, I shouldn't say ever since I started, but since I started knitting hats and since I learned the German twisted cast on, or I believe it's also called the Norwegian cast on, that's pretty much the only cast on that I've used for my hats because I found it to be very, very stretchy and comfortable. Now, someone had told me that they thought the tubular cast on was a nice, um, stretchy cast on. And I mean, it is nice. It's a nice cast on. I've, I've used it for a couple of different things, but I don't think it was very stretchy. So I made a hat and you could see it's not, I mean, I can't get this on my head and it's, you know, you go around, it's 80 stitches. That's usually what I put cast on for my hats, but I can't. And here's the same yarn. I really didn't like the way the coloring came out on this yarn, so. But here's the same, the same exact yarn. You can't see because it's rolling up with the German twisted cast on and it's just so much stretchier. Did I do, I mean, did I do something? I don't know if you guys, would. why do I keep scratching myself? So I don't know, did I do something wrong in the tubular cast on? Does any, can anybody tell from, you know? I mean, I don't know, I don't find it to be that stretchy and I'm afraid to pull it more to stretch it over my head because I might break the yarn. Not that I care because I mean, I, can't stand this dye job. I, I'm not saying who the maker is because somebody else might like it, but bleh, I didn't like it at all. And of course I have my nice little knitting notions, yarn cozy. Fuck off, I'm knitting. Um, we stopped at Jibby Beans while we were in Reno and I'm telling you, that place is amazing. Okay, I'll see if I can put in a, a clip that I took when I was there. We are now at Jimmy Beans. It's a showroom style now, and so we have to check the warehouse for you. If we have Look at this. Say hi, Ellen. Hi. I'm in big trouble. Ellen's in big trouble. She's in the Malabrigo room. I'll try to go slow so you guys don't get dizzy. All right, Mal, show it to me. I can get you up on vlog tonight. <laughs> but I'm like all of us here. That's gorgeous. <laughs> oh, is it Stephen West? That's oh, I didn't right. think Stephen West crocheted. I didn't think he crocheted either. Is it? Oh, no. I'm. Okay, I'm I was going to say. Here we have some hedgehog. So. Okay. I know. I'm sorry. Oh, gonna get anything? <laughs> what was that, Mel? What did I say? I wasn't going to get anything. <laughs> Here's hedgehog. Look at this stunning dress. Or cover. I don't know what it is. Is it? I need to finish mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That is stunning. Right? You make it. Back in there. These are stunning oh, samples. Know, right? That's what gets me. I'm fine until I get here and see the samples. 
It's always the problem. I get here and see the samples. <laughs> and I go, ooh. Exactly. <laughs> okay, I missed my chance. She wandered off there. Here's some more Madeline Tosh. Hmm? It's always the samples that get me. Yep. Like I, I, wouldn't, I would have looked right over this. This store has so many samples in new new patterns, new yarns. The samples get you. You see a sample and you're just like, oh, I have to, I have to make that. I have to make that. And that's what happened. So the shawl is, I'm not going to show you that because there's too much. There's no picture on here. Anyway, it's called, it's a beautiful world shawl. And the designer is Michael Selleck. And it's a crochet shawl, but it is gorgeous. And me and my girlfriend, Melissa, we both fell in love with it. We are the crocheters. El my friend Ellen does not crochet. And it uses two skeins of yarn. The yarn is Sheepy Whirls. And it's one of these gradient color works. Now you start the shawl from either way. You could start from the outside or the inside and you go halfway through the pattern. And when you go to the next skein, you want to start with that same color and then you'd work back to the other end to the, the first color that you started with. And this project is living in my Katie did bags. I love this bag because right now it's a bag, but if you pull down, it becomes a little bucket. I love it. I love it, Katie. Anyway, here's the shawl. So as you can see, I started it with this magenta down here, which is on the outside of this ball. And then it works its way lighter to the purple to the really dark purple that ooh matches my hair. And so when I started the second ball, I had to start with the dark purple that was in the center and work my way out. Now the funny part about this project is it actually oh, it's a free it's a free pattern. That's good to know. And I will put a link to it in the description box below. But the pattern calls for a size 7 hook. And there isn't really much to, there's no real explanation. There's no real explanation. There's no real um, swatching guide for this shawl on the pattern. And so I feel that when I crochet, I crochet, I don't think I crochet tight. And I don't think I crochet particularly loose. So when I was at Jimmy Beans, I bought a crochet hook that matched the size the pattern called for. My girlfriend, Melissa, knows that she's a tight crocheter, so she went with the hook one size up. But when I first started this on the size 7 hook, I felt like it was really, really loose and it just it didn't look right to me. And I had done, um, I would say I was probably about up to here. Yes, I had done about that much. And it was super, super loose. I did not like it at all. And when I first started it, I kept texting Melissa and I was like, mine looks really, really loose. And she kept saying, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. When you get to the shells, it'll, it'll all work out. I didn't realize how tight of a crocheter my friend Melissa is. So one, so I texted her a picture <clears throat> a while back. If I still have it on my phone, I'll insert it. <clears throat> but I texted her a picture of mine and I'm like, mine does, and she texted me back. She's like, mine doesn't look anything like that. And she's using the bigger hook. So finally I decided, I, I measured it out. And I think with the bigger hook, mine was coming out to about like 110 inches long. It's only supposed to be 94 inches long. So I'm like, all right, Melissa texts me back. 
Hers is 80 inches long. It's like, damn. So, unfortunately, I ripped it all out. And I went down a hook size. I went to a G. And I like it so much better. It is a cotton yarn. Let me see. What is it? So, it's the Sheepy Swirl. Whirl. And this color is Tasty Num Num. Color number 789. How funny is that? That is the school, my school number. <laughs> it is 60% cotton and 40% acrylic. So I think when this is done, this will make a very nice spring, summer, fall shawl that when you just have a little chill, you can put it over your shoulders and it'll keep you warm. Moving on. Now you guys are going to think I'm crazy. I already know my friends think I'm crazy for this one. But I fell in love when I saw this pattern online. I had been looking for a blanket pattern to use all of my scrap fingering weight with. And at one time, I thought I was going to do the um, mitered square sock blanket that Sh Shelly... I'll put it up here. I can't remember who who the designer is. But I really thought I was going to I was going to do that. And then I did a couple of squares and I'm like mm, not really feeling this one. But I kept collecting minis. I kept, you know, collecting my or saving my fingering weight yarn leftovers and then the Blattenberg blanket came out. And I fell in love. I will put a picture either up here if I can figure out how to do that or I will insert one in here. But I, I fell in love. It's a crocheted blanket but it's tiny tiny squares. These are two inch squares. So during the pandemic that's what I did. I crocheted bunches and bunches and bunches of minis of these mini squares. Two inches. Two inch squares. I know I'm crazy. I think I have my last count, I had 520 something. And I only count them once I've woven in all the ends. And I think I have maybe another 50 in here that I need to weave in the ends for. And then I have some undyed yarn that's going to be the squares in between that I'm going to put together. And this is going to be a blanket for me. Pretty much everybody in my family has a blanket or two or three that I've made them. And I do not have one for myself. So this is going to be my blanket. My, 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 my. This is going to take me forever. Now I'm also working on another blanket for someone who might be watching this podcast so I'm not going to say the name of the blanket because that'll be a dead giveaway as to who it's for. But it's made with all these square. Again, it's crocheted. I, I do almost all my blankets in crochet. I don't know why. I just always have. But it's a bunch of squares in all different colors. I can't say what the name is yet. It, it, was a, it was a pattern that I bought from Ravelry. I had a lot of the yarn in my stash, sadly. But I have all the colored squares finished. So like I said, it was red, orange, yellow, bright green, light blue, dark blue, purple, 
and I think pink. And I have tw 12 squares of each of those colors already done. I have to make, I want to say about 60 black squares and 30 or 40 gray squares. And then I need to put it together. Uh, but anyway, I think it's going to be really neat at the end. I think the person I'm making it for is going to love it. So I did warn you, this was a blanket heavy episode. Right after I started those, the squares for that, that blanket, the big blank, the bigger squares that I was showing you guys, I decided to invest in the furls crochet hooks. I thought I wouldn't because the, the Odyssey line has a heavier weight to it, but I really like it. And I'm so mad right now because they are all out of ease. And I need E to finish my Blattenberg. No, I need D. D is what they're out of. I need D to finish my Blattenberg blanket. But I love these. If you have not tried them, that they are pricey. I will tell you that they are pricey. But I love it. I love it. I really didn't think I would find something that I liked better than my tulips. But I love the furls. Okay, the last whip that I have that I want to share with you guys is the crocheted hook. Oh, actually, before I say that, Stefania. Eric, if you're listening to my podcast, turn around, close your eyes. I don't want to ruin the surprise for the girl, for, for Priya. Okay? You got your eyes closed? Okay. So, the blanket that I'm making is for my littlest niece. She is so into... And I didn't want to say that too loud in case my sister and brother-in-law are watching this but I found this pattern it's by Brie Abbey it, it is another crocheted pattern but it is so adorable let me show you do you see this All I need to do is finish the face and make the one. You can see that the crochet pattern is mostly shells with a couple of rows of double crochet, breaking it up. And as you go up, the number of shell rows increases. I am not, I mean, it is a paid pattern. I'm not giving anything away about it because you can tell by the pictures, beautiful edging. The pattern does have two different edgings. I chose the shells because I like shells. So the next thing that I want to show you guys is more of a, I need some help. The Vertices United that I showed you earlier in the podcast is actually my third one. This one that I'm about to show you is the very first one I've knit. It has a hole in it. I don't know if it happened, if I had, you know, I think I caught it on something last time I wore it. But if anybody knows how to attempt to fix this, let me know in the comments below, please. Because I really want to fix this. I love this one. It's made with all leftover yarns. but I have this hole and I'm trying to fix it. I'm really trying to use my stash and I don't have a whole lot of 
sweaters quantities, sweater quantity worth of yarn. I guess when I, when I go shopping for yarn or when I go to festivals, I see pretty colors and I see so many that I'll buy a skein or two here. Oh, I'll make a hat with this. I'll make a scarf with that. Or, you know, two, two skeins of fingering weight. I'll make myself a nice shawl. But I don't really buy a whole sweater's quantities worth because I never know. I have, first of all, I have not made enough sweaters for myself to know off the top of my head what yardage I would need for a fingering weight sweater, what yardage I would need for like a DK weight sweater. And so I kept thinking, how, how am I going to do this by working? How am I going to do this working through my stash? And then, so over COVID, I was watching podcasters and I found new, found new podcasters all the time to watch. And I was watching Chevy Rell's stuff. And if you have not seen her podcast, you need to go watch her. I will put a link to her down below. She is hysterical. I wish we lived closer because I would love to go drinking with her. But she was wearing um, the Dirty Martini cardigan in one of her podcasts. Because like when I see, when I, when I found her, her show, um, I obviously did what, you know, other people probably do when they find podcasters that have been around for a while is you go back and you binge watch all the previous episodes and one of her episodes she had just finished the dirty martini uh, cardigan and she was wearing it when she went to um, a yarn store and that's when it hit me that she had used two different colors now the dirty martini is is done in all one color and so in my mind I guess when I see these sweater patterns these cardigan patterns when they're all done in one color I don't even think to to mix colors unless the the yarn is a mix of colors if I'm making any sense here it's like you know if you're gonna buy a, a mix like you know using mine if you're gonna buy you know like nine eight skeins of this to make a sweater that's one thing because you've got all the different colors in it or if you buy it in, you know, in a solid color. But I never thought of mixing and matching colors to make a sweater. And her dirty martini, she did the body in one color, and then the like the the shawl. I don't. It's, it wasn't. It's not a shawl collar, but the collar collar in a different color. And then she used that same color in the sleeves. And I was like, why didn't I think of that? And then the other one, as I was scroll going through watching her other videos, was the Weekender sweater. She did like color blocks and it's gorgeous. And I don't know why I didn't think that you could do this when you, when you find patterns that are all one. I, I don't know why. I don't know why I didn't think of this. Like when you see the Weekender sweater, it, you just, I shouldn't say you, I, I just assume that you need to do it all in, in one color yarn. Like whether it's a solid color or whether it's a multicolor yarn, you need to buy the quantity for that sweater in that one color way. But you don't. I don't know how. I didn't think to do this. Like I know I have gone through in Ravelry and looked at other people's projects and I guess Either I didn't scroll through every single project to see other people do this, or when I've seen that the color, the color, more colorful sweaters, it's because the yarn is that way and they had enough of that one colorway to do the whole sweater in that colorway. It's not like in Chevis's weekend, Weekender, she has like black, yellow, uh, and I just, I, I, don't, I don't know how I didn't think of this. So Chevis, thank you. I, I, you know, and she gave me permission to use her pictures that I stole off of Instagram. So that's, that's okay. But have you ever had an aha moment while you were crafting, whether you were crocheting or knitting or weaving or, or, or even yarn dyeing, like an aha moment that you were like, how did I not know that? 
if you did, let me know because I, I feel so stupid that I never thought of this before. So as I was going through my stash, trying to put together some yarns to make my hopefully soon get started on, um, my dirty martini or my weekender, I happened to come across this skein that I'm not sure where I acquired it from, but in keeping with my trying new wools, I didn't realize this was in my stash, Romney yarn. It's hand spun. It's not really my colors, but I don't know where I got it from. Sorry, I have to cover my face for the camera to, but it's, it's only 143 yards and it's about 10 wraps per inch. So that's probably what, like a sport DK weight. If anybody has an idea for this yarn, not bad if anybody has an idea for how to use this yarn it's 100 like I said it's 143 yards sport weight sport DK or what color I should put with it what would be a good complementary color to put with this it's brown gray and red but if you have an idea let me know because I'm looking to start using some of these novel, I shouldn't say novelty yarns, because I'm looking for some ideas to start using these different sheep wools that I've purchased. I'm, I'm dying to see how they knit up and stuff and how they work. So a few weeks ago, I took a weekend trip up to New York. It's where I'm originally from. I'm from Westchester County, New York, and my parents and my younger sister and her family and several cousins, aunts and uncles and cousins still live up there. But when I went up there, uh, when I'm with my nieces, I like to, to do things with them, whether it's something creative, whether it's taking them out to dinner and a movie, but I like to spend time with them and to create those memory type of moments because, you know, opening a gift on a birthday is one thing, but growing up, I remember moments and I, and I want to be able to create some of those moments for my nieces to remember as they grow up. And so one of the things that I did this time is we did yarn dyeing. So we used food coloring because apparently in the grocery stores in New York where I went, they did not have Kool-Aid packets. Who doesn't have Kool-Aid packets? Apparently the stores in New York. So we had food coloring. So we used food coloring. We used vinegar. So I did it with three of my nieces. The two, my two nieces that live in New York, one is 13 and one is five or six. She's going to kill me. I'm so sorry, Priya. And then my other niece was also with us. She is um, 21, but she's great with kids and she's always around. So we did some yarn dyeing. I brought up some yarn from my stash, some uh, obviously natural colored yarns. And we, I asked them, you know, what did they want to do? What colors did they want? Did they want to mix some colors? Because, you know, we've only got a couple of colors in food coloring, but we could, you know, make others. So the littlest one, my, my little unicorn lover, she wanted to do pink and blue. So I happen to have two skeins of sparkly yarn, yarn that had Stellina in it. I call it sparkly yarn for them. So she wanted one of the sparkly yarns and this is what she created. Isn't that cute? So she wants leg warmers out of these because she, you know, she's a dancer. So she wants leg warmers out of these. And then um, her older sister, Maya, She's the 13 year old. She started with one of the sparkly yarns too, one of the Stellina yarns, and she went with green and blue to start. And then I had one extra yarn, sorry, one extra skein of yarn. It was a, a sport weight that she did purple and this like minty color green. 
and she wants fingerless mitts out of this one. She hasn't decided yet what she wants to do, what she wants me to make her with this one, but she wants fingerless mitts out of this one. And then my oldest niece, Juliana, she knit up this orange and, and purple. And she wants me to make her some sort of a, maybe a halter top or a, 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 a cropped like beach cover type thing. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to be able to make her out of one skein of yarn, but we'll try something. So my nieces are, I have one other niece. She was not there for the weekend because she is studying to be a nurse. Jewel Gabriella. Love you guys. Um, but my nieces are so appreciative of everything that I make them. They are so knit worthy. It's unbelievable. My, the two little ones, Maya and Priya that live up in New York, they still have the very first hats I knit them from when they were babies. My, my sister tells me that they have all the hats in like this, this bin. And when the winter time comes and they, and they need to pick a hat, they line up all the hats on the sofa <laughs> and they decide which one they want to wear for the day. So I am more than happy to knit my nieces almost anything they want. Almost anything they want. But, um, yes. Yeah, so when I was there this, this last time, and we were using, we were dyeing up the yarn. The littlest one asked me to make her some blankets for her Barbies. So if anybody out there has a good Barbie blanket pattern, let me know. Put it in the comment box because I'm looking for a Barbie blanket pattern. <laughs> but, oh, while I have your attention, speaking of girls, my sister, the one with the two, well, the one with the two younger ones, because the older my older sister has two too. Um, she's a Girl Scout troop leader. Actually, she is, I think, like a regional Girl Scout. She's in charge of all the Girl Scouts in the area or something like that. Anyway, she um, had mentioned to me that she would like me to maybe come up one weekend and teach the girls how to knit or crochet. If anybody out there has tips on how to teach kids how to knit or crochet, please share them with me. Because I, I don't know what to do. And also, I'm a left-handed crocheter. So if anybody knows of a tips or tricks of how I could teach a right-handed person to crochet, let me know. Because that's been a, a a struggle for me is, is trying to, because I'm left-handed. I always tell my friends, I, I can't teach you I'm left-handed. So now let's get on to the fun part, the stash quisitions. So on our cross country trip, like I said, we sort of turned it into a yarn crawl. And the first place we stopped that was Jimmy Beans in Reno, Nevada. And I've already showed you what I purchased from there. That was the sheep's whirl yarn and the, um, the shawl that I already started making from it. The next yarn shop that we stopped at was Blazing Needles, which is in Salt Lake City, Utah. Adorable little store. So Blazing Needles was a very cute store. If you're ever in Salt Lake, Salt Lake City, Utah, I highly recommend you, you take a stop there and, and take a look around and see what's, what's there because it's, it's kind of a neat store. The second, or the, actually the third yarn shop we stopped at was at Athena Fibers and that was in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And it was, it's a house. It's got a beautiful wraparound porch. I'll insert a picture. While we were there, we, we took a look around and I have been looking at this yarn online for quite a while, but I never bought it. But I couldn't resist. I bought two balls of the Siddhar Jewel Spun. I mean, just look at those colors. 
I think I might make a baby blanket out of it. I'm not quite sure. So the fourth shop on our yarn crawl <laughs> uh, was called Yarnology, and it's in Winona, Minnesota. Very, very cute shop. Um, I did, oh, oh, they actually had La Bien Ame, Ame yarn in there. It was so beautiful, so beautiful, so nice. They didn't have my colors, otherwise I probably would have gotten some. The next yarn shop we stopped at, I think if I ever open a yarn shop, this is what I would want to open. It was a coffee shop house and a yarn shop together. It was called the Sow's Ear. Again, it was in a house. It was, in, it was you know, it was a house that was the store. They had a very, very cute outside area right in the front where people could, you know, take their coffee and their little treats if they wanted to eat outside. And then in the back, they had all the beautiful, beautiful yarn. And I did find things to buy, but I kept, I stuck to my wanting to try new things. They had some beautiful, beautiful indie dyer yarns of super wash merino and, and stuff like that. But I found two skeins. They they do not go together. But they're stunning. So the first is exquisite. West Yorkshire Spinners Exquisite Four Ply. It's 80% Falkland wool and 20% mulberry silk. Look at this color. It is gorgeous. Bordeaux. Ooh -hoo -hoo. So 437 yards. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I just... Oops. It's about to come out. But Falkland yarn is very nice. this is a me color as my friends will tell you this is a me color now the other yarn I found I have never ever seen anything like this and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to pronounce it correctly Queen Fiber it's hand dyed in London but look at this it's a fuzzy yarn but it almost looks, I don't even know if it comes through. It almost looks like pillow stuffing. It is, oh my God, I may have to get my glasses. That's how you know you're getting old. Fifty percent, I'm sorry. 65% baby surrey, 20% superwash merino, 15% silk, 191 yards. But I thought this would look really nice with held together maybe with black yarn so that these colors sort of pop on the black. I saw this knit up in um they had a Stephen West dotted rays and they did each section in a different colorway and one one section was this yarn and it was just so beautiful. So again, this was from the Sow's Ears in, uh, I forgot to tell you, Verona, Wisconsin. So if you're ever in Verona, Wisconsin or near there, I highly, highly recommend you stop at the Sow's Ear. The next yarn stop on our um, trip was not one that we had planned. We happened to have gone to uh, a breakfast place. I don't even remember why we were going to this particular place for breakfast. But we went through a, a cute little town, uh, Cambridge, Wisconsin, 
and there were some you know the as we were driving to i don't know how we didn't see this but as we were driving to the the restaurant we saw like the, there was like a pottery store and there was like a, a cute little antiques and so we went and had breakfast and on the way back into town <laughs> melissa was driving and i swear she must have radar from the side of her eye she saw a yarn store that we didn't know was there and all I, all we heard was yarn store and then the car was like Ew! into a parking spot and me and ellen were just like what just happened <laughs> and it's in cambridge wisconsin a very very cute store there were you know there's yarn stitch markers bags and a parrot which i thought was hysterical so I did buy a special, not a specialty yarn, but a specially dyed yarn. So this is called Stitch Together Studios Yarn, and it's their Stitch Smooth Sock, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 300, I'm sorry, 463 yards. And it was a specially dyed colorway for uh, LYS Day 2020. It's called Rise Together. And I just thought the colors were beautiful. So I picked up a skein of this. And then they had Wonder Woman stitch markers. Which I guess I gotta get out of my face. And I'm I'm a huge Wonder Woman fan. So I had to get the Wonder Woman stitch markers. And then on our very last stop, we were in Pittsburgh where we were visiting our friend Andy for a couple of days and she took us to her friend uh, Amy's yarn shop, which is called McWalker Yarns. Very, very cute yarn store. If you're ever in Pittsburgh, you need to go there. And I picked up a skein of Leading Men Fiber Arts in their showstopper base called Drag Queen. I mean, is that not a perfect name? Perfect colors, too. These are my colors as well. Every color is my color. I don't know why I'm saying that. But again, another one that matches my hair. But, so I have Showstopper, which is 7525, 463 yards. And then they had some naughty stitch markers that I just had to pick up. Let's see, what does this one say? I make shit. That shit will block out. That's, I think that's my favorite. Knit up, bitches. And then the last thing I got there was a t-shirt. Little sheep, a glass of wine, sheep-faced. I couldn't resist. I just thought that was so adorable. So a friend, my friend Ellen is redoing her house and she bought some furniture and, and a, a, another friend of ours, Lisa, went over to help her put it together and helped her out a lot and, and bought her a gift card to one of our local yarn shops as a thank you. So one Saturday after our mor Saturday morning knitting, a bunch of us went to Clover Hill Yarn Shops in Catonsville, Maryland, and we went yarn shopping. And I saw these skeins, these colors, and they were beautiful together. And of course, they only had one skein of the mixed colorway. But I tried to talk my friend Melissa into buying it, but she resisted. How? I don't know. Obviously, I did not resist well enough. So I put these three yarns together. Are they not are they not gorgeous? I mean, look at that. And that wasn't enough. So I have five now. Two blues, two purples, and one mixed. So this is their house brand. It's called Tempting You. I love that logo. 
So the sparkly base is a 7525, which is a superwash merino nylon Stellina. And then the mixed colorway does not have any Stellina. So it is 7525 superwash merino nylon. So the, the sparkly um, base is 231 yards. The sparkly base is 231 yards. And the plain base is 246 yards. So yeah, about 1,100 yards in three colors. So if you have an idea for a pattern that uses these three beautiful colors, let me know in the comments. I need something. I mean, could you have put this back if you if you if you found this? So the last purchase I want to talk about is a, a completely new yarn to me. DK Denmark, I think. I think it's from Denmark. Anyway, it's called Holst, Holst Garn, H-O-L-S-T. And I'll put a link to it below. Um, I did stick, kind of, stick to um, my wanting to try new wool bases, different different sheep. And so I did buy some what they call sample packets or, or gift packages. I'm not I'm not quite sure, but it's on the website. So one of the packages that I bought was um the base is called No Noble and it's ninety five percent Geelong wool and five percent cashmere. And now I'm going going to try not to crinkle too much because so what these kits are is they have 10 different colors and about I think it's 10 to 15 grams I think it's 10 10 different colors 10 grams each for 100 grams total and I thought that was cute because I'd get to see the different colors I'd get to make something small with them but but those are in the blues blue and gray bases the next one I purchased is um, their super soft base. It's 100% wool. Um, it's in their pinks, pinks and purple colorway. And then the very last one is their is their base. The very last one I bought is their base called Coast, and it is a wool and I think a cotton blend, and it's in purples. Shipping did not take as long as I would have thought coming across the pond. So I'm super excited. I might attempt to weave with them or I may just knit something just to see how they feel, especially that Geelong. I've heard good things about Geelong. I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right. But yeah, I'm looking forward to playing with these. One last thing I want to share were these adorable stitch markers that I found on Etsy. The Etsy shop is called Needle Clicks and I just, I mean, sheep, sheep with masks. How cute are those? I had to get them. I just had to you all the yarn that I've dyed up but I think I'm going to save that for another episode because this has gone on pretty long um I think this weekend I'm going to attempt to take pictures of them so if you follow me on Instagram you might see some of the pictures go up and then I'm going to post them in my Etsy shop knit knot and weave currently right now I just have some knitted garments up in there um but I think I'm going to do a separate episode the very last thing, the very last thing now I have to share with you is something that I finally, finally managed to acquire. And I think it's adorable. I just, I don't know how I have survived this many years being a teacher without this. It's called the Damn It Doll. I bought it from the Crafty Floridian. 
if you don't know who the crafty Floridian is, you should watch her, her podcasts. She does incredible fundraising stuff, incredible charity work. I, I just, she is someone who has, Billy has a huge, huge heart. And she, she crafts things. She makes things like this. She sells them. She has done fundraisers on her channel for different organizations, different reservations. I just really go, go watch her channel, go back, watch her, her previous episodes to see all the fundraising stuff she does. It's just amazing. Um, but anyway, she makes these damn it dolls. And as my friends will probably not even blink an eye at the fact that I bought the pirate doll, Miss Pirate, but I think it's adorable. When your temper is about to boil, you want to scream and shout. Here's a little damn it doll you cannot do without. Just grasp it firmly by the legs and find a place to slam it. And as you whack the stuffing out, yell, damn it, damn it, damn it. And if you don't say damn it, if damn it's not a word you say, then grab its little neck <laughs> and just murmur quietly, oh heck, oh heck, oh heck. <laughs> I don't know how I have taught for 20 years and not had a damn it doll in my office. <laughs> Well, folks, that is all I have for tonight. We are, oh yeah, we are coming upon the witching hour and I need to go to bed. Hopefully I will edit this video tomorrow and have it up soon. But I bid you good night. Ciao, ciao. Until the next time, if you enjoyed this podcast, please give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and hit that bell for notifications so you can be notified of my next podcast. Bye-bye. Hello, and welcome to the Knit, Not, and Weave podcast. I wonder if I should flip it the other way. Let's see what happens. No. <laughs> this is take Of course, it's good. That one thing. Anybody tell me? Does anybody know any other? Why am I scratching? This is a podcast. Podcast. What is wrong with me? Podcast. You can use teeth for these. Really? Do 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 do. I don't know. Really? Okay. Of course, the fucking cord isn't long enough. Oh shit. Oh, that was it. <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. Should we try this again? Okay. Let's try this again. Of course, I don't have any fucking deep up here. Okay. Let's try this again. And, you know what? I'm coming to you from Columbia, Maryland. <laughs> so the very last yarn, yarn, a little bit, a little bit, a so the last stash acquisition I want to share with you. So that was just one of our funny moments on our trip. I'm always curious as to how other people, people's trips. I can speak today. Which you can see from that clip. No. So as you can see, I wanted to share an aha moment that I had. I have been wanting... Going off on a tangent here. I joined a gym. Uh, my girlfriend, Carol, talked me into it. Thank you, Carol. Um, it's called 39 Minute Workout, and it's a kettlebell workout, and it's literally 39 minutes and you're done. Oh, I'm not with that at all. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of dead time on this video. Um, I have been, um, 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 what is with this? Um, we have two, three. Why am I doing this? Why?
um, 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 um. I don't have a pattern in mind, but I could put, I mean, look at that. How did you expect me to put that back on the shelf? I mean, look. Um, a special color that they did they, so I do have a lot of dyed yarn that I dyed, yarn that I dyed. I do have a lot of yarn that I dyed, but this podcast has, this episode has gone on. <laughs> That's all, folks.